can everyone still see that? Just checking. Yeah. Yep. yeah, cool. Okay, it's recording now. Okay, so this is our How to Become Savvy Section 2 webinar. Um, my laptop is kind of crazy. There we go. Um, so we're going to cover uh, comms plan examples, just a brief overview of that, what we covered last week. Finding your audience. So we're going to go a little bit more in detail on how to find your audience. And then we're going to talk about materials, message and meaning. Um, and then broadcast, broadcast and disseminations, how are you going to get some of this content out there? And then last, some digital tools that might help you do some comms. So these are communications plans. Um, we went over this last week, but it's just a bit of overview. So you usually have a bit of a background. So what's the purpose or your aims for your comms plan? Um, and what are the tasks required to do that? Then you need to identify and define your audience, develop a message for your audience. So using how you've identified your audience to create the message and then work out a bit of a plan. So what kind of, how are you going to get the content out there? Do you require any training to do this? Um, how are you going to collect feedback on your communications or your project? Um, and how sustainable is this? And then obviously evaluating that for next time. So have you met your outcomes? So this is another bit, an example of a plan where you can actually just write a list. So products, what are the types of products that you're creating? Is it blogs? Is it um, written or video materials? You know, and then who are your audience? Um, so you can identify uh, groups of people um, or identify specific individuals that you might want to target. And um, how you're going to do this is the method. And then impact, how much impact do you want to uh, have on these groups of people and then when and who so who's going to who's going to do this and when and this is another example so we spoke about stakeholder uh, stakeholder mapping last time so uh, who's the stakeholders what are the desired actions content uh, delivery and then by when and this is another example but I'm going to skip past this so the really important things is with any project you do um, you need to have an aim for what you're trying to achieve and I'm talking about PB in this sense but what are you hoping to get out of it and this is the starting point for designing any project or process um, for building a communications strategy. So Andrew Brightwell my colleague uh, he said this in our How to Become Savvy podcast you can produce as much material as you like but if you haven't thought about who your audience is and how you get to them then forget it um, and that is very true. So where are you starting from? And how does this fit alongside other opportunities? So is this going to be meaningful for citizens? So is there already things out there that people go to, you know, community groups? Um, is there things online, Facebook, social groups, events that are already happening? And what are they? So you want to map down what's already going on. And what resources and opportunities are there you can build from? Um, so what I mean by that is resources could be people that are already doing stuff uh, that you could tag yourself onto. Um, and opportunities could be events or it could be just meetings or um, you know, after school clubs, hobbies, things like that, that people go to where you can um, use that to your advantage to build on your communication strategy. Um, so again, this is really important. Time restraints. Time restraints is a massive problem um, for most communications um, strategy. So you really need to think about what are your limitations? Um, what's your time frame to do this in? Um, and you need to order what is most vital in your comms plan. So what is the, mo the most important message that you want to get across to your audience? Um, and the really important thing to do before you even start is think about everything that could be a problem and then you want to solve the biggest problem first. So it could be that no one cares about participatory budgeting because they don't know what it is. So it might be that you're trying to explain to people what participatory budgeting is. Um, so do people actually care about what you're doing? Do you have the resources to do this? Um, it might be that you have to rejig or change your sort of thought process. So the example is, no one cares about PB, but they might care about something specific that is relevant to them. So deciding what the new park looks like because they go to the new park or um, 
you know, um, building a new after school club for young people um, because they care about that. So you have to target it towards people a little bit more specific than something over sort of an overview of something. Um, so evaluation is really important and I'm going to come to this at the very end, but it's something to think about right at the start of your project or process is how you're going to evaluate success. So how are you going to evaluate how well your communication uh, strategy has done? Because if you're going to do this again next year or you're going to do another project down the line, it's really good to see where you've um, failed and where you could do better, but also where you succeeded. So what's actually gone well and how are you going to keep doing that and make it better so this is the most important thing that we're going to be talking about today is audience who is your target audience so who are you targeting um, is your project or process in a community or a city or even a country so how local or wide is your audience that you're targeting what are the demographics so I'm not going to go too much into demographics but I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means um, so demographic is basically age and um, are they residents where, where are they located do they go to school what's their education or their background and um, do they work do they have any hobbies or interests um, and you're going to go kind of into detail about this but how do they at the moment find out about things in their local area so I mean, these are probably the key things that you're you probably want to work out about your audience. So where do they go at the moment to find out things? Um, and what makes this process relevant in people's lives? So it, it might not be that you're doing a PB process, it might be that you're just doing a project and you're trying to uh, get a message out there, but it needs to be relevant to people, otherwise they won't care or they might not, they might not just be interested in what you're trying to tell people. And are there any similar organizations or people similar that are doing something similar to you and how are they getting to their audience and what strategies are they using it's quite a good idea um, to use uh, your well it depends if you think that are competitor or not um, but how they're becoming successful or not so what are they doing well um, that you can uh, touch on or what are they not doing so well so it's good to take from others learning so who are your audience are you looking for a particular age, gender, uh, location, stage of life? Um, what's their political interests? So can you imagine this person? Um, do they have emotions, needs, passions, frustrations? And what value or benefit can you bring to the table? So what can you bring to them? Um, so you want to think about all these things, but who's your ideal audience? So if you're running a project or a process, um, what, this kind of comes under your outcomes and your aims, like what you're actually trying to achieve. So what's your, who's your ideal audience? Who would you like to get to? Um, would you like to change something that people are doing or get people to uh, buy into a certain project that you're doing or um, product? And what kinds of groups or associations would they join? So they might have joined maybe groups already, but maybe they'd be interested in joining something. So you really want to think about who these people are. Um, what do they dislike? So try imagine a prototype person who's your main audience. So imagine the, the sort of, um, this would be your main demographic audience. Name the person, you can give them an age, an outlook on life, a job, a family, um, what city do they live in? What are their interests? And, and do you have more than one audience? And it's sometimes a good idea to actually just map out exactly what you're looking for, what, the, what these people might, might be interested in. So another thing to me, think about is what is cool to these people? Like what are they interested in? What impresses them? How do they interact with each other? Are they technical? Are they sophisticated? Um, what is the tone of their language? Do they use slang? Do they want just the facts? Are they emotional? Are they angry? Um, what are their problems? What do they value? Um, what is most important to them? Um, and what are they least likely to care about? So the best way to spread your message is to start observing what is already being shared, discussed and admired by your audience. Another thing to think about is 
again, what I'm saying is where do they hang out? Where do they go to talk? What activities are they taking part in? Uh, are they, do they read articles? Do they watch TV? Um, are they social? Do they have their own jargon or lingo? So do they have slang? Uh, do they use, what language do they use? So now we're gonna talk a little bit about message. So again, my colleague said this in our How To Become Savvy podcast. Um, PB means nothing to anyone. So make it meaningful. So it's kind of what I was talking about earlier, participatory budgeting, it doesn't mean that much unless you make it relevant to someone. So you want to come up with a message um, and, and you want to think about what are you actually trying to tell people? Um, make sure you're prioritizing this information by giving the most important piece of information first, which could just be a couple of sentences or a slogan. So um, talking about PB, it could be like, um, Leith decides or Dundee decides or your voice your choice so that's the slogan and then you might want to the second bit of information could be something like um, what the what it's about so um, we're running a process to get more people uh, involved in our community to decide how money is spent so the second three information it could be how you uh, how you can upload an idea or how you vote and when can you do this? So it could be times, uh, an event, or something like that. So you need to prioritize the information. What's the key bit of information that you could put into a, couple, a sentence even um, and put it in a tweet um, or get it out on multiple platforms? And then you want to think about your secondary bit of information that's key and then what's less important. So a little bit more about, I don't know, rules or guidelines or things like that. And the same goes for any project you do or any, um, anything that you're trying to, you know, like a product that you're trying to sell. Um, you want to keep it short and snappy. That's the first bit of information that people are going to read and see and pick up on. So this is an example of this, a very um, taken from the internet, but a key message. So this is uh, about Oxfam. So the, most, the key message is the most significant achievement of Oxfam's grow campaign was securing policy changes on food and land from governments. Um, so they've got their secondary message. One, Oxfam was able to influence global land, blah, blah, blah. And then they've got a secondary message two, a secondary message three, and then they've got supportive information underneath. So it kind of backs it up a little bit, but it's, it's for people that are maybe they've picked up on that key message and then they want to read a little bit more about it. So you always want to have one sentence that tells you exactly what you're trying to do. Um, so we spoke about this in the last webinar, but I'm just gonna go over this a little bit because this is about messaging. Um, so the upside down pyramid is basically a little diagram that, that explains how you're wanting to mess, uh, how you want to get the message out. So at the top, what matters most and then at the bottom what matters least or so for example people what people consume uh, day to day they might watch tv listen to radio they might use social media um, and a little bit uh, now and then they might listen to news and then it goes down the line so at the very bottom they might subscribe to media comment online um, and only a few people will campaign and only a few people might be really interested in politics and take that extra step further. So you want to think about how what people consume on a regular basis to get your message out there. So how are you going to target your audience and where do they go? So the majority of your audience are not going to be campaigners. They're going to be watching TV, listening to radio, using Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Um, and comprehension. So what do your audience understand? So the majority of people are going to read the easy to read bit and the explanation at the very top. So that's what we're talking about, key messaging. So you really want your key message to be easy to understand and maybe a little bit of explanation. And then you can kind of go down if you're wanting to provide a little bit more information. So relatable conversation, uh, something that's relatable to them, a little bit of information about the process or the product that you're trying to, trying to sell. Um, a diagram or infographic, so, so this could be an image, um, and then a news piece. So further down, um, less people are going to pick up on it or understand or you know have the sort of motivation to read or listen to what you're 
explaining. So if you're trying to give a key message out or a message about anything, you really want it to be easy to read, uh, the language to relate to the audience that you're trying to target, and a little bit of explanation. So a little bit about what I was talking about is the attention span of a lot of people. So most people have a short attention span um, and then further down, my, you know, uh, a smaller number of people are less likely to do certain things. So you really want to think about how you're going to, depending on the audience that you're targeting, of course, but how are you going to grab the, the most people's attention? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about content in a bit and how you might do that. But that's the idea. So this is a quote from Ken MacArthur, who, spoke, who is um, a, a guy who talks a lot about how you target your audience. So you don't stand out in a crowd by standing there and yelling. And this is kind of related to the boy who cried wolf. So you didn't get anywhere by crying wolf because people shut off after a while. So you don't want to keep repeating yourself if it's not going anywhere. You want to really chat to people and get involved in who your audience are. So I'm kind of going back to audience again because it's really, really important to get your target audience right in order to create your message. So what is my audience interested in? What would they want to read? What do they search for? And how can you entertain them? So what, what entertains them? Um, yeah, and when you're creating your message, you might want to be personal, a little bit helpful. Um, when you're talking to your audience, you want to ask them questions. Um, be very human um, and use their language and jargon. So sharing media as well, um, pictures, videos and reports that they will connect with is quite an important thing to do as well. So going back to key messaging. So a key message is basically the most important bit of information that you want the public to know. So it could be one or two sentences to get to the, you know, get to the grit of the matter. Um, and they can help you kind of create um, an unambiguous communication. Um, and then obviously simple messages are jargon free. Um, so they're easy to understand. So the majority of people can understand simple messaging. And they can translate, you know, if, if you're trying to explain something quite complex. So even for example, participatory budgeting, it's quite a long winded word or a phrase. So how would you explain that uh, con concept into a really simple um, idea that everyone can understand? So it could be a short slogan, could be a campaign poster or a little bit longer uh, that explains about what it is that you're trying to do. So um, going back to like creating a message and finding your audience, you want to think about what you stand for as an organization and what, um, what you can give to your audience. So it's not just about what you're trying to get from them. It's what, you, what can you give to them that's going to help them. You want to be as specific as possible, but also what's going to surprise them. So if, they, if you're a well-established organization, you might traditionally uh, do something that's you know that's seen as quite normal say for example you're a council um but maybe you do something that's a little bit more surprising so how would they like how would that engage them a little bit more and what do you want your audience to think or or learn or assume about you as an organization um, and what impression do you want to give them about you or your product or your process or whatever you're trying to do and you want to solve real problems so how are you going to help them? Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about brands because it does relate to messaging. So I'm sure everyone's heard of Coca-Cola. Um, so what does Coke Zero, Zero Sugar taste like? So this is like their main slogan that they've got there. Um, so, Coca-Cola's brand, um, it's, it's revolves around emotions. So how do people feel when they see that brand image? 
Um, so I'm going to talk about brands because when you're creating a key message, a really important thing to do is create some visuals as well as just having a little slogan or a, a bit of information. Um, and the reason why is because people are attracted to visual media. When we're talking about um, the sort of upside down pyramid, when, when you see something uh, that's easy to understand, people can connect with visual imagery a lot better than they can read some, uh, some things sometimes. So things like colors, um, little images, even photos, videos, it's a really good idea to create a sort of brand um, or logo or something like that for whatever you create, depending on what product, uh, project or process you're trying to do. So, um, this is a little bit on advertising and how it works, but there's the hard sell v soft sell strategy. So hard sell is when you're selling something and you're only you only care about getting the product out or getting the, uh, the project um, out and you kind of, you're kind of pushing it on people without really thinking how this might affect them. So it's, you want this, you can have this, you take this kind of thing. Whereas a soft sell is a little bit more concerned for a customer or consumer. So um, you might, you might uh, have a little bit more discussion with them. You might listen to them about what they want um, and you might present the benefits a little bit better instead of just sort of pushing it upon them. So I'm gonna just show you some examples of this. So that first one, you so want one. Do you think that would be hard sell or soft sell? Don't know if anyone can hear me still, but what do you think that one could be? Well, I mean, it's a hard sell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what about the bottom one, the Mars truck size? Possibly, yeah. It is a hard sell, but it's it's a little bit harder to see because they've not got um they've not got a a slogan attached to it. So because it's just an image, um, it's a little bit harder to work out. So some images, um, you might think, oh, like that's quite uh, emotional or um a little bit you know pushy. Um, so for example, this top one, you can see it's a little bit. Uh, pushy, it's pushing it onto the consumer or the, um, the your audience. So this is an example of emotional uh, advertising. So how you might try and connect with people a little bit more. Um, not necessarily always good thing. So for example, smoking kills, and there's a picture of a dead person there. Um, this is an example of emotional advertising. Um, and then the bottom one uh, as a Nike advert, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. So it's almost like trying to connect to people um, by using emotion. Um, this is an example here again of a Nike advert. So um, how they've done this, this is a hard selling. So the shoe works if you do. It's kind of saying, um, you, you know, it's a perfect choice, but you'll need to, you, you'll need to work to wear it kind of thing. Um, a lot of the hard selling adverts is like, it, it's very targeted. It's like you, you, and you know, the finger point kind of thing. Um, does anyone remember the advert from, I think it's like World War II when it's like the finger pointing, um, we need you kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it appeals to people because it's very directed towards someone. So, and then um, obviously if you're having, if you, I know we're talking about, products here but if you were to do a process or a project you could have an image that sort of portrays what you're trying to do so the purpose of the process or um your project uh, you can have some some sort of imagery there to explain how you would do that and this is just another wee example um, and this is a little bit more soft because it's just an, an, Im an image um, so you know, are you hungry? How, how can I help you? It's like that sort of, I can help you by giving you this kind of thing instead of you, you, you. Okay, so creating content. Um, so um, it's really important to develop content, but if you are creating content, you really need some delivery platforms. 
So if you don't have a platform to put it, then you can't really put it anywhere. So what would a delivery platform be? It could be, you know, social network profiles like Twitter, Facebook, article sites, forums. And then the content would be blogs, newsletters, um, videos, um, little bits of information or photos or things like that. Um, and going back to your audience, uh, you really want to observe what's already being shared, uh, chat, like ch sort of chatted about or admired by your audience. And this could include uh, things that are a little bit more personal. So um, what was talking about imagery there, so photos, videos, podcasts, and things that are a little bit more relatable to someone. Um, and it's important to have platform to communicate on a consistent basis. So how might you do this that's going to really hit people regularly instead of just putting one thing up and kind of leaving it for a while? Um, so one way to think about how you might work out where you're, what your audience is searching for is developing a list of keywords and key phrases that they might be looking for. So keyword research is a tactic marketers use to help increase search engine optimization. So for bloggers or websites, so to improve visibility uh, when people are searching online. Uh, you might use like Twitter advanced search to search on your keywords and phrases uh, and follow interesting people in the results. So you might uh, use that search thing or uh, subscribe to the RSS feed of the results. You might want to identify hashtags used in posts related to your, to your project or your process. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways that you can kind of develop keywords, key phrases or um, hashtags. Um, So promotion, outreach, and dissemination. Um, so if once you've kind of created your content, it's really important to not just kind of chuck it on one channel. Um, it's a good idea to get it. So you want to think about going back to audience, where they might be going. Um, you know, if they're not if they're not going to be on Facebook, where are they? So a good idea is to map out everywhere that your audience is, and then you can channel put all your content on various channels so and that will be offline and online i know this is offline and offline never ignore that and um, so notice boards local newspapers newsletters posters and flyers so these are all examples of offline communication so you might want to think about the demographics of that audience like who would be looking at a notice board and um, who would be looking at the local newspapers or the newsletters and, and where would they be so is it going to be in a local supermarket um, or your local community hub or your sports centers or your schools. So who's going to be reading that? Who's not online? Um, and are you targeting these people? Are you targeting this demographic group of people? Um, and then networks of people in establishing in established community groups. So who's already talking? Who can you actually, this is another example of offline, but can you just go and talk to people about the project or the process? or whatever you're trying to do. You just go and chat to people. And where might these people already be talking? Could be that it's in the local pub or a church. And there's so many places that people go to talk. Um, and can you attach yourself onto any events that are upcoming that are kind of related to what you're doing? So um, going back to your research at the very start, what's already happening? Can you um, get involved in that? Um, and so what already exists in your area, you might want to think about, and this is more related to PB or um, sort of citizen re related processes, but are there any resident associations or community groups? And are they on social media? So for example, in Edinburgh, you might have like the Meadows group share or Edinburgh share, or it could be like a Manchester local group, things like that. Um, yeah, so you want to search for these online as well and find out where discussions are already being held. Um, so a really good idea is instead of just pushing your content out there consistently, you know, you're creating content uh, and you're getting out there. A good idea is actually just to reach out to your audience and become part of the community that that's already existing. So you can subscribe to blogs, join networks, join groups, 
uh, write articles, attend events, just chat to folk, uh, create useful content, comment on blogs and forums, uh, set up Google alerts to track mentions. Um, there's an app called Stumble Upon, which you can discover and read new content. Um, and it might even be that you just introduce yourself to people. So sending someone a personalized email. So they, they acknowledge you because you've noticed them and you care enough to actually personally contact them. So it could be via Twitter or uh, email. Um, and it's a good idea to just sort of respond to people, respond to posts, answer questions, try and be helpful and solve problems. So you're making them notice your presence and share interesting content that's not just your own. So, um, you know, um, you can check out various advertisements that are already out there to sort of help you with your uh, content creating. You might want to search Facebook fan pages and find out who or what is popular and what is being retweeted, what posts are drawing comments. So what's actually what people are going to. Um, what fan pages have high followers? So we spoke a little bit about um, influencers in the last webinar. Um, so what, um, what pages are, do have high influence or high influencers? Um, and what are the hot topics of today? What are the, what's the news covering you know, the media right now? What are the headlines drawing people in? So there's so many things that you could sort of attach yourself to to become part of a community instead of just delivering content. Um, and that way people are going to be more interested in what you're doing because you've reached out to them. So um, it's another way of doing things. So this is an example of digital marketing. So a little image there. Um, how might you do digital? Uh, how might you get the message out digitally? So as I was talking about, you don't want to just put your content out on one channel because that's only going to reach potentially just one audience or one demographic. You want to get it out on various channels um, and the same message and the same sort of style that you're using. So you've got your key message and you can take that key message or your slogan or your, uh, your logo and you could put it on Facebook, uh, email, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, you know, various channels that are uh, attracting various demographic audiences. Um, okay, so last but not least, how are you going to evaluate this? Um, and this is kind of talking about PB specifically, but on online on some of these platforms, you can actually evaluate. Um, you can evaluate your process using sort of various um, analytics and metrics on these platforms. So it could be you can see how many people are coming online uh, and voting or uh, commenting and things like that. But if you're doing something else, it's good a good idea to use sort of social media or Google Analytics or some sort of feedback analysis that's online um, where people can uh, tell you if it was meaningful um, and, how, and why they've accessed your site or maybe, you know, why they've done something because of your communication strategy. So you could ask some questions, very sh but keep it very short and sweet uh, so not to turn people off. Um, Okay, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about digital tools that might help you with comms. So I don't know if you guys have heard of Canva, and um, this is what I use to create sort of slides and things like that, but you can also create cool infographics, and um, you can create sort of, I don't know, like podcast covers or, um, I don't know, album covers, things like that, uh, social media pictures, like for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and it's really, it's free, so you can download it. It's a free tool to use. It's really good. Um, so that's what we use to create slides sometimes. Um, and this is Buffer. So what I was saying about putting your content out on various channels or multiple channels at once, you might want to use a tool to help you do that. So Buffer is a channel where you can put out tweets on various, I don't know, various Twitter accounts, but you could also put it on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Pinterest or whatever you're using at the same time so it syncs up and you can schedule tweets for certain times so say you wanted to put something out tomorrow you could schedule it in for that specific time 
So it's quite good if you've got time constraints and time limitations, you spend a couple of hours just putting in all your communications uh, content in there and then you've scheduled it and you don't need to think about it anymore. So it's a really useful tool to have. Um, so this is something for a little bit, if you're a little bit more techie, um, but sometimes I use InDesign or Illustrator for creating posters or um, I don't know, like newsletters or posters or whatever, whatever you think. But um, so InDesign is a little bit more techy you have to sort of train yourself how to use it but in design and illustrator are really good um for creating more visual content as well um, and there's some templates in these programs as well so you can um like canva so canva's got a lot of templates there's some in indesign in illustrator but it's a little bit more advanced um Oh yeah, and this is Adobe Spark. So Adobe Spark's really good for making short videos. Uh, you can see there, it's, it's a very blurry picture, but you've got a little microphone there. So you can add sound to um, images or short videos, um, and you can use that. That's a really good app that we've been using as well. And obviously, if you're to create video, um, there are many, many, many video um, sort of apps out there now you can get them on your phone these days and um, but if you're to use sort of an adobe creative suite uh, premiere pro or it could be something like movie maker or final cut pro and um, but i know there's lots of free ones that you can get on on your phone or your ipad or whatever like that so it's a good idea if you're wanting to create short you know short clips and um, yeah there's lots of apps for that as well um, I know this is a blurry picture, but if you're to do any podcasting or Vox Pops, we use uh, a free app, which is Audacity. Um, and there's also the other one, which is Adobe Edition. Um, but obviously, that's part of the creative Adobe suite. So, but Audacity is a free app. You can just download it on the internet um, and you can get it on your phone as well. So it's another app to use. Um, so the next few webinars, um, we're going to be covering security, verification and GDPR inclusion in digital so how might you make your website more inclusive things like that and um, making the case for digital pb so persuading people to get involved in participatory budgeting and then community mapping but make sure you check out our youtube channel for all webinar coverage because we've got a lot more and that's us that was great thanks cheers hang on i'm just gonna um turn this off I don't know how to stop sharing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, I'm just taking a note of all of the um, software that you. Oh, yeah, there's almost so much out there, honestly. There is, and we're quite limited as to what we can use every time I sort of go to explore the different options. It's like you cannot visit this web page. I would definitely use if you're gonna do anything. Like the best app is definitely is definitely Canva. It's free, so you can just even like download. Uh, if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. But it's free to download. So, um, if you're creating like images and things like that, uh, it's really useful. But um, it depends how techy you are as well. Like. Okay. What you want yeah. to I mean, I can work my way around a computer, but I'm willing to learn if it's going to be something that's going to be useful. It's just think, picking which one to learn about. Yeah, I don't mean. I think Spark, Adobe Spark's really easy to use as well because you're literally just, you can just drag stuff onto it in like audio and things. So okay. those two, I definitely recommend if you're to use anything. But. Cool. I've been using something called Movavi, which is just a, a phone app, and it's so limited, but it's it's the money that's just so fun. What's it called, Movavi? Yeah. Never heard of that.